Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a little different um, from my regular makeup tutorials. I will be talking about how to set up and establish your own nail salon. Um, a lot of you might not know, but I am a nail salon owner and um, I just wanted to go over my experiences and what I went through when I was ready to establish my own nail salon. So I'm going to go over a couple questions that I usually get people asking me um, who are interested in either working as a nail tech or eventually opening up their own nail salon. So first things first, a couple questions you want to ask yourself. Are you ready to start your own nail salon? financially or just time-wise you know um, do you have the time to make that commitment and um, build your own nail salon now another thing to think of is do you want to build your nail salon from scratch or are you looking for a turnkey business that you can just take over that is uh, pre-done for you and you just come up with a business plan do you want to work as a nail tech or do you want to be the owner and have employees so when I went ahead and decided that I wanted to open my own nail salon, the first thing I did is enroll in a school which uh, would give me my manicurist license. That's all I needed for a nail salon. Now if you were looking into opening up a, a hair salon or a full uh, service salon, you would need to have a cosmetologist license. I didn't really need a license to be an owner, but that is something I thought I should have if I wanted to get in the business. So that was the first step that I took. I went and enrolled in a school. The second thing you wanna do is um, find the place. You wanna find where you wanna open your salon, which city, um, you wanna find the right uh, space in a plaza, or where would you do this? Some people set it up in their residence, or you, know, you would go ahead and find a space that is affordable for you. You wanna find out if you can make that commitment for that rent. Um, uh, the next thing you want to do is once you found that space in commercial spaces you want to make sure that you go to the city next the city has a lot of requirements and you cannot open up your nail salon till you meet those requirements things like uh, plumbing are you meeting the plumbing requirements electrical uh, requirements or um, the fire department has different requirements so you will have a whole list you want to make sure that before leasing a place, you know that you're not getting yourself into a whole bunch of work. You want to make sure that you're not ending up spending a lot more money than you will be making profit. So when it came to also picking up a space, I did make sure it was a smaller space and nothing too overwhelming. Something that I'd be able to, um, you know, manage. If I had a big, huge space, the rent would be really high. The utilities would end up going higher. So this was definitely a very good decision on my part to rent a space that was um, manageable. So with the city, all you have to do is the place that you decide to lease, you would go ahead and give them the address and they will print out a list of all the requirements that are needed for that specific place. Um, if it means that there are some regulations that are not met, they will let you know and you can fix that but that will give you a good idea as to how much more money you would need to spend in your business. The next thing is decor. So you wanna pick your colors, you wanna make sure your place is warm and um, welcoming. Are you planning to go for a modern theme? Are you planning to go for a more traditional salon looking theme? Um, all of those good things, those are the fun things. But of course, the city requirements and the state requirements is what we're gonna talk about. Now one thing that was really important um, that the city really made us do is um, a ventilation system. And those are those golden vents going up in the back, which you see, they had to go up on the wall or they were to just sit in the center of your desk, which we preferred that look better. Um, and that is something that is pretty much required by all states. Um, this was for the state of Michigan um, and I'm pretty sure all the other states would require that too because they do take the ventilation pretty serious and that can be a little bit costly. So make sure that you look into what your state requirement is. Another thing that you can do is uh, go on to LARA, which is um, uh, the Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs. Um, they have a list of everything that you need um, as far as requirements and rules and what you need before you start your own nail salon. That would also have all the steps for you before you go ahead and apply for that license uh, for your nail salon. 
When you do go ahead and apply for your license, you will need to fill a couple forms. Again, you will find that on the LARA website and um, the state will tell you what exactly they need. Now, I tried calling the customer service and I went by the list. Not everything is mentioned on there. Some things you just will know by people or talking to people who are experienced in the business or just that you would know. You know that um, you need to have barbicide containers out. You would need to have uh, different um, containers for clean brushes and dirty brushes or soiled linens and clean linens. Clean linens have to be in an enclosed container. As far as state requirements go, um, you would need to apply for a license. You would need to fill out your form. They will ask you for a floor plan. You have a couple options. You can go ahead and get a floor plan made and spend thousands of dollars, or you can just go online and make your own um, floor plan. Some people draw it out. It really depends. Are you good at drawing or is it gonna be terrible and people won't be able to understand? But what I did is I went to, it's called, I think, um, Lucid Charts. I will link that below in the description box. But I want, went on there and I was able to do their free trial and I could just go ahead and um, start my uh, little floor plan over there. So I made sure that I got measurements of the whole place. So you would need to know how much does this place, this whole walkway or the hall measure, how much does the janitorial section measure, your lunch area, you would need to make a floor plan of the whole area. Once you've done that, you can submit your paperwork and they're pretty good getting back with you. And um, once you're approved, they will call you before coming in for your first inspection and they will let you know that someone will be coming in to do an inspection. Um, your inspector comes in, does a walkthrough, and if you are following the rules, if you have everything laid out the right way, you shouldn't have any problems. They're pretty good knowing that you're a new salon owner and it's your first inspection, they're pretty easy and they do do a good job explaining. At least my inspector was really nice and she was very helpful with a lot of questions that we had. So mostly, if you have a question, just ask. So some things that your um, state inspector will be checking, which are not on the website, are, let me see. I have them written over here as a list because it has been a while, so I wrote myself some notes. You will need barbicide containers. You need to have the right mix of it, so you don't want it to be too diluted or too um, potent. Is that the correct word? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you don't want it to have it too diluted or too potent. You want to make sure that your clean brushes are separate from your dirty brushes. You want to make sure you have a first aid box. You have a um, source of drinking water. You have a sink where you can wash your hands. You want to keep out sanitizer bottles. You want to have everything labeled. So all your alcohol bottles or your acetone bottles, they all have to be labeled so that there's no um, hazard in any case or there's no reason where someone used the wrong stuff on a customer. That's pretty much that goes into building your own salon or the requirements for the salon when it comes to what you need to get started. Talking about the business aspect of it. Now, if you're starting from scratch, these are things that I learned from going into my um, salon and these are some things that I make sure that I tell everybody because I know it's a new thing, you're excited and you just wanna get started. So some ad advice that I have is I would not st start from scratch because when I started from scratch, I had to go from floors to walls to anything and everything that I had to get fixed. There was bad plumbing that I got stuck with. Um, there was a lot of electrical work that I didn't know about and I had to get fixed up. So those are things. If you do find a salon which is already established and is more like a turnkey business, I would go for that. Um, again, it is totally up to you. If you have the finances to go for it, why not? You can uh, personalize it the way you want. I would not overstock on products. If you are um, just starting out, there is no reason to overstock on items or 
buy the newest furniture, you want to make sure that your business starts running and making profit before going in and stocking up. You would need to study your clientele, the area that you are in. Are you getting a lot of people using bright colors? Are you getting a lot of people just doing uh, American manicures or light pastels? Um, and that is something you're just going to learn with time. So that is when you stock up because you would know what are your popular colors, so what are the things that are needed. Um, how many pedicures or manicures do you get different types? Um, so those are things you want to wait on. Don't spend all that money and have that product sitting on shelves because your product can also get wasted with depending on the temperature. Another thing that I was very serious about was sanitation in my salon. That's how I wanted to stand out. Um, as far as sanitation went, we made sure our tools were uh, taken care of. You know, our customers, they don't really want to come here with nothing and then go home with a bacterial infection or some sort of foot fungus. So always make sure that you respect your customers and sanitize the right way. They're trusting you, you wanna make sure that you don't let them down. Another thing is marketing. So marketing is a big thing. If you're a new salon and people don't really know about you, make sure that you are uh, handing out flyers at um, you know the stores next door or to family and friends to pass out or Facebook or Instagram. There's different ways of marketing, but marketing is definitely something that is very, very crucial when it comes to getting your business up and running. A big piece of advice you want to make sure that you're present in your business because you're the only one who can make your business run the way you want you every person knows exactly what you see where you see your salon where you see your business where you see yourself standing in five years or three years um, but you set that goal for yourself and if you are gonna take that step go ahead and put your all in it and you will see the fruits of it. If you like the video, please share a like and comment. If you are planning on opening up your nail salon, you have any questions that I can help, please leave the questions in my description box and um, I'll go ahead and I'll answer them for you. I will be recording a video for everyone who's going to be doing their state board uh, for a manicurist license and I will show you how to prepare for that. Have a great day and I'll see you soon. Here's a little view of my salon. And this is just my little setup, so I thought this was convenient. And that's it. It's That's my favorite spot. It says it's all fun and games until someone breaks a nail. So that works perfectly for the nail salon. And then my chandelier, of course. And it says polish bar. I've had a lot of people read that as Polish bar but it says if the color fits wear it and that is that one more time